Hey guys, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am Greg, here today to talk about a book that I finished recently in the month of August. Uh, there are actually a couple of books that I have finished in the month of August, but I am saving some of them. So I finished um, The Harbor by Ernest Poole, but I'm going to save this one until I have read His Family by the same author, because this is an addendum to my Pulitzer Prize project, and this is the one that actually won a Pulitzer Prize, so I'm going to hold on talking on this one until I have read his family. I also read two books for women in translation month so far, uh, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata and The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I'm going to hold those because I'm currently listening to a third one on audio and I'm going to talk about them together um, when, just as a women in translation video by itself. I have also finished The Bluest Eye and The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead, but I, I just finished both of those so I, I want to give myself a little bit of time to think about the reading experiences that came along with those. So those are still to come. Uh, I, I will do review videos on all of those, but today I want to talk to you about Maid, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive by Stephanie Land. This is a nonfiction book, obviously, about Stephanie Land's struggles with money. She eventually gets, job, gets work as a maid and uses that job to try to struggle her way out of poverty and to provide for her daughter. It, it is a very interesting book. It can be an uncomfortable book, especially if you have ever struggled with money in the past or if you know somebody who has really struggled with past with money in the past. Anyway, that is something that I struggled with um, at one point in the past and a lot of the stuff that I had experienced dovetails in. My, my situation was not anywhere near as extreme as Stephanie Land's, but I, I did experience a lot of things where when you're having trouble financially, people judge you very harshly and there's not a lot of sympathy or empathy toward what you're going through. I remember I even, uh, I, I would bow out of doing things with friends because they didn't have the money to do it. And they would just really harshly be like, well, you never want to, you never want to do anything, it, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, you never do, you never want to treat anybody to anything. And, you know, you're stuck in this horrible place. And that was kind of difficult for me reading this book because... Stephanie Land obviously goes through the same things. And I think one of the best things you can get from this book is an idea that you need to be, you can be more aware of what other people are going through. You can be a little sympathetic. You should not be judgmental about something. Because she ends up in this situation largely because she ends up pregnant and she decides to keep the baby. And she does not blame the baby. She loves her baby, but at the same time, she feels like she gets off track. She is not on the life that she had planned for herself, and she tries to find ways to get back to it, even though it seems like it's going to be impossible. One of the things I particularly loved about this book is that the happy ending Stephanie Land wants is that she wants to move to Missoula, which is the town where I live. And, you know, I really, one of my big struggles in life, which first world, first world problem, let me warn you right off the bat, is that nobody knows where Missoula is. Nobody understand. No, nobody really has, well, I shouldn't say nobody. Most people don't have a really idea what, of what Montana is, what it's like to live here. They're kind of like, oh, cool. And that's it. So having my, and when they do, it's John Cracker writing a book about, um, uh, Missoula and how the college was the subject of rape allegations and that's how problematic it is. So that for a while was the only understanding people had of my had of my town and I should read that book at some point as a sidebar. But it's nice that the happy ending in this book is Missoula where I live. Essentially Stephanie Land was planning to go to the University of Montana which is here in Missoula and she wanted to attend to become a writer. Uh, University of Montana has a big journalism program. But she ends up having the baby. She tries to uh, tries to make it go, but she has the baby. Uh, her boyfriend at the time was really not excited about being a father. Locks her into a sort of abusive relation. Not sort of. It's like an emotionally abusive relationship. And right off the right off the bat, you run into a situation where Stephanie Land is being judged by things because it's an abusive relationship. But because she doesn't have bruises, she can't prove it. People don't really believe her. People aren't sympathetic to her about what she's going through. And she feels stuck, like she has nothing to do. So finally, uh, he breaks something in the house and she feels, it, it, she describes how she finally felt that she had evidence she could show people of what she was going through. And it's like, that should not be something that has to happen. So I guess you could say that I'm a little bit biased to agree with this book and to side with Stephanie Land. But I think she's showing a lot of important things to people um, who might not be aware of these things or who might not be sympathetic to some of these things. And just 
believe people when they try to tell you that they're going having a hard time give them a little bit of help because you know honestly a, even a little understanding goes a long way toward helping these people and just brightening their day and making it not as much of a struggle just an ounce of compassion can do a lot one of the things that really uh, just made me angry was that so when her relationship with the father of her baby really goes south Stephanie Land ends up in a homeless shelter and that's where her baby learns to walk and that she talks about how that's something she has to struggle with the fact that her baby took her first steps in a homeless shelter and it's something that bothers her throughout the book she's like I, am I doing right by my daughter how can I make her have a better life I don't want her to have these be her earliest experiences of the world and when she manages to get out of the homeless shelter her parents help her move out of the homeless shelter uh, then they take her for lunch and as they're getting ready to leave the father says to her oh do you want me to get the waiter so you can pay the bill and she has only like ten dollars in the bank and it ends up in the standoff where she's kind of like I, I i don't have money and her parents are like we're helping you move you should be the one to pay for lunch this is so disrespectful and it's like oh my god you just moved her out of a homeless shelter and that sounds like a bit of an extreme situation but i think it really goes to show the idea that people don't really have sympathy for money trouble they think you're doing something wrong and it's your fault. So if you don't have money, it's your fault. You should be doing better. And that's not always the case. So eventually, Stephanie gets a job as a maid and it's really hard work. It's hard. And I think one thing that people also don't think about is how even having a job is difficult because your livelihood depends on your car and your ability to get around and having money for gas so you can get around. And when you don't have money for that, you can't work. And I think Stephanie Land does a really good job showing how fragile that connection is. It's like your car is your connection to everything, but you don't have money, so you have a crappy car. And again, I, again, I really don't think that's something people think about. I know uh, I had a friend when, back when I worked at Borders, really didn't have money. He had a horrible car. It was like falling apart. People gave him crap about that car all the time, but he legitimately could not afford a better car he was working at borders so he could go to school and it was just like a temporary thing but people gave him such crap and he would feel so bad about his car um but it was his only connection to a job and a productive life and oh my god so point just being i think this book is capital i important and something that a lot of people should read maybe something that would open a lot of people's eyes um give them a different perspective it's really well told uh i think stephanie land is very good at showing all the different sides and facets of, of her life and what she went through uh, i thought it was really interesting as well how she talks about being a maid which is of course a, a quote-unquote service position there are a lot of situations where she's just invisible. People don't treat her like she doesn't exist. She could go into a house and it would be like nobody was there. It was like she didn't exist. She wasn't even worth talking to or acknowledging. But then there would be people who would be nice to her, but then she end, would end up in this sort of no man's land where it's like you're not really somebody's friend. You're their employee. So where are you in the world? And I think that's, re I thought that was really interesting. Basically, long story short, read this book. I think it's fantastic. I think it reveals a lot about the lower income side of the world and what it's like to live like that and to try so hard to struggle and fight your way up and how it's just not easy and the judgment that you face as you do it. So if you have read, if Barbara Ehrenreich actually did the forward to this book, if you have read Nickel and Dimed, this would be a natural fit for you. I think also if you've read and enjoyed Educated by Tara Westover, this would probably be also a good book for you. So check it out. If you have read it, I would love to hear what you thought. If you have other recommendations, I'd love to hear, hear that as well. Drop those com comments down below. And again, as always, thank you for your time watching this video. I always appreciate that. And uh, I'll be back again. Until then, happy reading.